Hi there, welcome to this Cheese Science Toolkit educational video all about cheese color and the chemistry behind it. Um, this will be a multi-part series on cheese color. I, did, I opted to do that instead of one big 50 minute video. I thought people might get bored with that halfway through. But all the information is just sort of gathered from a post we did earlier this year about cheese color. The URL to that is right there and I'll put a link in the description. Uh, before we get to the nitty gritty chemistry, I want to talk about real briefly the spectrum of cheese colors that are available out there. Uh, we have, we can start sort of here on the left with a really, really white cheese, snow white, I like to say. This is a goat's milk cheese, and we'll talk about why that is. That goat milk causes this really white color in the next video. So we start here at the white color, and we move along the spectrum to sort of more of the yellowish colors, and we get to the deep, dark yellow color here. This is a cheese where the cow has fed a lot of grass, was on pasture quite a bit. That gives the cheese a really, really dark yellow color. We're going to talk about that in this video here. And then we keep going along that spectrum and we move over here to this dark orangish color. A really, really bright, intense orange. And in this case, uh, the cheesemaker actually added color uh, via annatto, which we'll cover in a separate video as well. Uh, this actually is one of my favorite cheeses. This is Red Rock, made by master cheesemaker Chris Raleigh here in Wisconsin. It's a cheddar blue hybrid. Really is great. And that's it. That really is the spectrum of cheese colors you can find. Various shades of those in either way. But that really is the full breadth of it. And there is a shade I didn't mention here that exists, I'd say, between these two. Not white, but not deep yellow. Sort of an off-white cream color. That is where a lot of cheeses fall. And that's sort of what a consumer thinks about the color of cheese when they think of something like a white cheddar or mozzarella or Monterey Jack. And that, that cheese looks like, like this. This is a picture of some Monterey Jack. It's not white, it's not yellow, it's sort of in the middle. And that's that's really what most people think about when they think of a quote unquote white cheese. You know, there's a slight tint of yellow there. And where's that tint of yellow coming from? That's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, let me clean up the screen a little bit, scroll down here. Okay, some fresh canvas to work with. So all cheese, most cheese at least, starts with milk. The milk starts off pretty much that snow white color I was talking about. Maybe it has a slight cream color to it, but definitely not as yellow as that, that cheese we already brought up. So the question becomes, how do we take this white milk and turn it into an uh, off-white, cream, creamy color cheese, sort of a light yellow color cheese or darker yellow color cheese? We'll talk about that in a bit. It all has to do with the structure of milk. And I have a little picture here. Let me see if I can drag this in. This is the structure of milk, a really schematic view of it. So we start with this really opaque white liquid, that is milk. This is milk. There we go. I'm not just patronizing my writing, that I'm trying to practice my handwriting a little bit. If we zoom in on that milk, we see what's called an emulsion. And that emulsion is that, that watery part of milk, quote unquote, uh, the, the whey or the serum as it's more aptly called. And then what's embedded in that or floating around in that, I guess a better term would be, are these fat globules. These are butterfat globules. And here I've drawn them as orange, but in, in real case it'd sort of be different shades of yellow depending on some factors that we'll get to in a bit. But this, these yellow, off-yellow fat globules are really what gives cheese that yellow color, that off-white color, and what gives butter its yellow color as well. So what you're doing when you make cheese is you're taking this watery portion and you're removing it, right? That's one major step of cheese making is basically dehydrating milk. And by removing that watery portion, what you're doing you're going to take these fat globules and you're going to concentrate them. Concentrate. Okay, there we go. Hopefully that's somewhat legible at least. By concentrating those yellow fat globules, you're going to get that orange color, or I should say, better say that yellow color that you get in a lot of cheeses and things like butter. But what's giving this white background color its whiteness, its white color? We need to zoom in even more and to see that we have what's called a suspension here. The suspension is the main protein in cheese and milk, casein. These casein proteins are what's responsible for the, the opaqueness and white color of milk. And what's happening there is, say a light beam, Mr. Light Beam comes in here and hits one of these casein micelles. What happens is it scatters the light. That means it sort of makes the light bounce around in a lot of different directions, breaks it up. And that scatter of light is going to happen on all these micelles, and there's you know, billions and billions of them in milk. 
So there's lice being scattered all about in different places. Let's see, let me try to label that. Light. L-A-G-H-T, there we go, can't even spell. Light scattering. That light scattering is really what's causing the white opaque quality of milk. And so you say, Pat, I don't believe you. I don't believe these yellow fat globules when they become concentrated give the, the creamy or yellow color of dairy products. I need to do an experiment at home to prove it to myself. And to that I say there's two main experiments you can do at home. The more difficult one, but the tastier one, would probably be just to make butter from cream. You can definitely do that at home. Just you take some butter and just shake it in a little baby food jar back and forth a lot. It's fun for the kids to do. We'll tucker them out. You'll get you'll get butter more or less, and it'll have that yellow color. And that's there you go. QED fact proved. Uh, but say you want a quicker experiment that doesn't require as much work, but isn't nearly as tasty. Well, to that I say you could actually get some milk and freeze it. And that's what will happen to milk when you freeze it. You start with something like this, this white color, and you freeze milk, it turns into this yellow color. This is freezing. And what that freezing is doing is causing that water in that milk, or another way of putting it is this white background layer, to crystallize into ice. And what that's doing is basically allowing that light to interact more with that fat globules, and that yellow color comes through. And now you can sort of prove to yourself, oh, there's the fat. It was there all along. It was just hiding behind all that water. That water is now out of the way because it's ice. It's not really out of the way. It has to do with crystal structures and light penetration, but we won't get into that much detail here. And you can actually thaw this milk, shake it up, and then turn back into milk. I haven't really noticed much of a effect on quality. Um, before we get too much further, before we get to the actual cheese talk, I want to talk real quick about a little bit about a... Uh, some of the cool chemistry behind this light scattering and causing the whiteness in milk. So say, for example, you have skim milk, which even most skim milks on the market have a little bit of fat left in it. It's really hard to get 100% fat removal. So you always have some of that creamy color going on just to a really small degree. If you ever do have the inclination and, and the time, I do suggest you just take a glass of skim next to a glass of whole milk and next to a glass of cream and just look at the color differences right away. The, the milk, it looks different. It's clearly different, not just the texture thing. It's clearly visually different in color and in opacity. It's really interesting. But for some of the older people listening, um, you may know skim milk is sometimes referred to as blue milk. And the reason for that is in certain lights, skim milk can definitely look almost like a blue hue. And that sort of happens when you're removing all that fat. That's, this is sort of a, a side effect of all that light scattering talked about up here scattering that light in different directions. So, you know, we call this blue milk. And just a fun fact, this light scattering effect, giving the whiteness of milk, um, that area of physics happens in another place that also is really apparent to everyone in their everyday lives. Uh, that scattering of light, in, in this case, is a little different, is what causes the sky to be blue, actually. The blue sky is because the particles in our atmosphere scatter light. And that also can cause milk to be white, or in some cases blue. I'm going to be perfectly honest, I did a little trick here. This isn't actually skim milk. Um, no matter how many times I tried to take a picture of skim milk, the blue I could see with my eyes wasn't coming through in the camera. This is actually just flour mixed with water, which also turns really blue. Another fun science experiment for the kids. Okay, we've, we've got off track a little bit, but now we want, to, we want to get back on track of talking about, you know, we start with white milk, and we're getting a cheese that looks like this. So we have this to this, and we're concentrating the fat, where the fat's the main thing causing that yellow color. And so why is fat yellow, more or less? Think about most oils you see, they're yellow. Because there's a lot of pigments that are fat soluble. And one main one we're gonna talk about here is beta carotene. Let me clear up some space here and drag in this. This is beta carotene. This is the main pigment found in uh, milk and cheese that's really, really yellow. Or even if it's really, really light yellow, then there's less of this floating around. But this is something that occurs a lot in grass. So if the cows eat more grass, this compound will go into the milk uh, via the fat and then via into the cheese. 
because you're concentrating the fat and that yellow color gets concentrated along the way. That's what's happening here. The important thing about remember with beta carotene is it's a it's a yellow this pen's a little big, let me size it down a little bit. It's a yellow pigment. And for those chemists in the room, uh, forgive me, cover your ears, block your eyes. I'm going to talk a little bit about the chemistry. I can't resist. If you notice, this is just a schematic drawing of what a molecule looks like. They don't look like this in real life. I know you zoom in, they look a lot different because there's a bunch of stuff going on. But these are called double bonds, these two lines. And you may notice. And this has to do with how the atoms are connected, not too important, the, the minutia here. But you may notice this molecule has every other, is that double line. You have double line, single line, double line, single line, double line, single line. This every other of double lines is really common in compounds that give us color. Beta carotene is an example that has that. Uh, chlorophyll has this in a different way. Uh, the, many of the compounds in the leaves that are turning right now, uh, this time of year, into the various colors have this double bonded structure. And this is a fun chemistry fact. Not really too much specific to with cheese. But that level of beta carotene, that yellow pigment, really determines how dark yellow the cheese is going to be. Uh, so just in a quick summary, right? this is you know found in grass. It's found in grass. The cows eat it, and it gets into the fat. And then it gets into the cheese, and it gives us the yellow color and the amount of beta carotene in the milk it won't be much if the cows don't eat any grass and it'd be a lot if they eat a lot of grass dictates how yellow the cheese is going to be I have a little picture demonstrating that here so uh, carotenoids right here that's just a fancy word for compounds like beta carotene it's just sort of a, a general term for it so when you see carotenoids just think beta carotene uh, and here's an example of a cheese where the cows didn't eat any pasture at all. And you can see it's not snow white, it has a little off-white yellow color, but still pretty white on our, on our spectrum. But as we increase the amount of grass they ate, remember, the more grass, the more grass they eat, that means the more beta carotene Oh, misspelled that, put it on there. The more beta carotene, that means the more yellow color. So here in the middle we have a cheese that eaten more beta carotene via the grass, gets into the fat and gets into the cheese. I have a darker yellow. Here's an example of cheese where the, the cows ate a lot of grass, a lot of beta carotene, and it's a really, really dark yellow. This is an example of a, a cheese from New Zealand where they have the luxury of the cows eating grass year round. Here in Wisconsin that's that's difficult considering we have winters that seem to last six months. But that really is the basics here, and the real point I wanted to get across is that you you start with a a white substance, and you get a yellow cheese, and all that is because of the fat, and what's in the fat. That's a really the most important part of what's going on here. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have a couple other videos talking about why goat milk cheese is white, and why annatto is orange, and how it gets the cheeses to be orange. But well, this really is the basics of talking about uh, milk and cheese color. And hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave me some comments. You send me an email. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks so much.